Good morning, friends. This is Wednesday morning, April 8, and we are on day three of our series entitled Journey to Joy, a five-day journey to a joy-filled you. And today's uh, message is entitled Living with God, Living with Joy. And so far, we've discovered that joy is something that God can restore. That's good news. God is also the only source of true joy. And today, I'm going to try to convince you that joy is something that you experience as you experience Jesus. And the text that I want to read from today is taken from Psalms, Psalms uh, 16, verse 11. And it says this, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. So you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Well, we have defined joy in this way. Joy is a chosen state of mind that is not influenced by surrounding circumstances, which results in delight, satisfaction, and gladness of the heart. Joy is a God-crafted combination of contentment, confidence, and hope. Well, today let's use a little gardening illustration, a little agricultural theme for our illustration. Uh, during this time, I've noticed that uh, for my family and for, for neighbors and friends, uh, that some of this social distancing and some of this uh, isolation, a lot of us spending some extra time at home, gives opportunity in this uh, beautiful spring weather that we're having here in the Northwest, uh, opportunities to be outside. And gardening is just a great way to, to spend your time. There's just a lot of satisfaction that comes in being able to, to, to grow uh, items. So we have a backyard, and in our backyard there's a, a section where we have some grapes that are growing. And right next to the grapes, also growing up, is um, some raspberries and some blackberries. And one of the things that I've noticed, I've learned a lot as in, in living in, in the home that we, that we do right now for the past uh, going on um, five years or so, that, um, you know, that there's times where you have to do some pruning, there's times you got to take care of and take care of the soil. And I've learned that like raspberries, they only grow every other year, like with the, 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 the stalks the, that will grow the raspberries this year will not grow the raspberries next year. So you prune those ones way down to the ground. I mean, I like just almost to the ground. And then the ones that didn't grow last year, they just, and every year after I, I prune, you know, my wife looks at it and it's like, what are you doing out there? It's like you're killing them. And yet every year these things just grow and grow like crazy. We have to we have to trim them throughout the whole summer, and we get just wonderfully delicious fruit. And uh, so I'm thinking about in our message today about experiencing joy as we experience Jesus. I'm thinking about what Jesus had to say about vines and about grapes and about gardening in the illustration in John chapter 15. And Jesus says it this way, and, and, you know, I love how Jesus uses illustrations that come to our mind. You know, when we're out, when I'm out with the raspberry, we just planted some blueberries. And you know, when, you, when you're out there, it reminds you of, whoa, look at, remember those things Jesus said about sowing and reaping and about being connected to the vine? Well, here's what he says about the vine in John 15, 5. He says, yes, I'm the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So a couple of things here. Uh, this is an awesome passage. And I, there's a couple of things that stand out, though. One is that the remaining concept, King James Version uses the word abiding. So it's that idea of having a constant, ongoing, continual relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and let me just remind you of this, this that salvation is, is not so much about a knowledge of God. Salvation is about experiencing a relationship with God. Salvation is, about, is an experiential uh, plan that God has for us. So as we remain in Christ, He's the vine, we're the branches. As we stay abided, as we stay connected, that there's there's a promise that it's, it's not that you might, but you will have fruit. And there's a lot of ideas about what that fruit is. 
um, fruit in our life, fruit of a new life, fruit of how we maybe even share our, our witness with others. But one of the options that I want to think of today is when I see that word fruit, it, it, it automatically makes me think about what Paul said in Galatians 5 about the fruits of the Spirit. And I want you to remember this about the fruits of the Spirit. So Paul starts off, and I don't know if there's any um, significance in the order in which he, he lists the different fruits of the Spirit. But notice what the second one is, right? But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Well, we could probably say that's that would probably be foremost on that sentence list, right? But the second one is joy, right? So, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, fulfillment. Like it goes all faithfulness, self controls Like it has this great list, and joy is mentioned second. So notice that when we, when we are in a relationship with Jesus that there's benefits. Think of it as your benefit package, right? And all of these benefits come to you as gifts from God called the fruit of the Holy Spirit given to you in your life. You're going to experience a greater depth of love, joy, peace. But joy is what our topic is here today. And so, so think of it this way. God, as you spend time with Him, you get this great benefit package where God says, you know what, You're, I'm going to give you as part of our relational experience together, I'm going to give you joy. So it, it's a mistake for us to think that we are going to discover bedrock, consistent, constant joy without being in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I like that idea um, because relationships, you know, we have... We're, we're not great at relationships, we'll be honest. We need godly help in that as well. We end up too often violating relationships. But God, is his, his whole desire in the creation of you and of me is relational. Like, let us. We're going to create this family, this community experience together. And as we live in community with each other and with God, we experience joy. So uh, think about that, that, that part. Um, God wants to give you joy. You ever received a gift? Um, so if you receive the gift of love, the gift of joy, the gift of salvation, think of it as someone that's reaching out a hand, handing you something. What is your part? Your part is to receive it. Your part is to believe that whoever is stretching out this gift to you is not going to snatch it back, is not playing some tomfoolery with you, trying to trick you, right? But God is extending to you these great gifts of salvation, love, joy, peace, forbearance. So your part is to believe that that gift is given to you and we receive it. That's That's our part. So so God offers, and by faith we say, you know what, I'm going to receive that gift. So I want you to think about that today. I um, am reminded of, um, there's this um, old, I don't know if it's a hymn or a chorus, it's just an old chorus that stands out in my mind. It says this, if you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, you remember the rest of it? Some of you know, right? Let Jesus come into your heart. And I think, wow, that's just like one sentence, and it is so packed with the truth that we're trying to share today that as you experience Jesus, you, you also experience joy. So are you letting Jesus come into your heart? I remember what A.W. Tozier had to say, and this stands out to me. So he said, the widest thing in the universe, the widest thing in the universe is not space, it is the potential capacity of the human heart. Being made in the image of God is, is capable of almost unlimited extensions of all directions. And one of the world's greatest tragedies is that we allow our hearts to shrink until there is room in them for little besides ourselves. Wow. So are you letting Jesus into your heart? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking... Uh, not only every day, but moment by moment throughout the day. I, and I say it this way, are you taking Jesus with you wherever you go? And I know there's not as much going out today, but I, I'm saying all throughout your experience this day, uh, picture Jesus, you know, he's knocking at your door. And uh, are you going to open it up? Are you, are you going to take Jesus with you in everything that you are doing today? So, Joy is something you experience as you experience Jesus. And let me 
Let me just read the verse again and close with, with the verse in your mind, in your ears. Psalm 1611, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Spend some time with Jesus today and you will increase your joy. Blessings on you.